We're counting down to the NFL draft, and now uh, we've got Justin Barney here. We're going to do our annual full first round mock draft here at News for Jacks. We've gone through, we took over uh, control for each team. <laughs> we've already heard some critiques from some of the other people around the building for not necessarily liking our picks for their team, but we went all the way through. Uh, Justin started things off with the number one overall pick. He nope. took the Panthers. No surprise. <laughs> Bryce Young is the guy. You got to go there. Franchise quarterback, you traded up to get him. No surprise there at one. I followed up. I know there's talk about whether or not the Texans will go a quarterback. I didn't break trend here. I went with C.J. Stroud, safe pick. The Texans need a quarterback. If they break trend on Thursday, then uh, that throws everything out of whack. But I went C.J. Stroud at two. <laughs> you know, and this flips back to me. Again, there's been a lot of speculation about the number three pick moving. We didn't have any trades in our mock draft. We just went straight board and yes. pick, and that's it. So the Cardinals for me, Will Anderson, maybe the best defensive player in the draft. He's going to Arizona. they got a lot of holes. All right, and you know there's a balance in this. What does the team going to do, and right. what, what do you want to do? Uh, so at four with the Colts, I win Anthony Richardson. I think he is the far better prospect as it comes, I mean, he's just physically insane as a quarterback. I don't want him in the AFC South for the Jaguars to have to play, but I have the Colts taking Anthony Richardson and passing on the Will Levis train. Yeah, that's say hey, that's that's. Uh, I think that's uh, you're not going to get a lot of uh, qualms from Colts fans. I think Anthony Richardson may not be ready to play this year, but yeah. he's uh, he's a good. And they guy got Gardner Minshew. Yeah, Come that's on. right. Hey, that's right. You know, Anthony Richardson maybe he's even talking Pro Football Hall of Fame after his career. Anthony not short on confidence, so. I like to pick with the Colts there. Jalen Carter's my guy at number five. Bulldogs uh, defensive lineman, and I had hoped after you know, all the, the stuff involving him with the, the charges, uh, misdemeanor charges involving in a wreck, um, and he had some, some workout issues, wasn't able to finish some of his drills at his pro day. Maybe I was hoping he would fall a little bit more, but Jalen never took a visit outside of the top ten picks. Seattle gets a franchise defensive tackle. That's a great one there for the Seahawks. All right, at six, I'm back on the clock for the Detroit Lions. Lions. I go quarterback. This is where Will Levis finds a home, a future replacement for Jared Goff. His kind of slide stops there. I know uh, our local Lions fan wasn't necessarily too pleased <laughs> with the pick, but I think this makes sense as they continue to Fort. build for the future. They're a team that doesn't have a ton of holes, so this one was a tough one for me. You know, I think Detroit, I think the, the Lions are going to be a dark horse Super Bowl contender next year. They are good. good. I mean, we saw them last year just eviscerate the Jaguars in the regular season, but uh, that was the second half stretch of the only loss for the Jaguars. And I would not be surprised to see the, the Lions deep in the playoffs this year. So good one. Will Levis maybe like Anthony Richardson, not playing a lot. Re give but him he a is a future, yeah. future kind of quarterback. Number seven, the Vegas Raiders on the clock. And I look for the, the most – Unobscure draft pick. I mean, they've had Cleveland Farrell. They've got, they've reached and reached and reached. But for me, I think I'm going cornerback Devin Witherspoon uh, from Illinois. He is going to the Vegas Raiders, and I thought about a quarterback there, but they've got uh, they've got their guy Jimmy Garoppolo. So I think uh, the Raiders are going to pass on a quarterback. Could draft a guy from Edward Waters or Jackson State there with that pick based on their history. But Devin Witherspoon, he's from Illinois. He's going there. All right, Falcons at eight. That was an easy one. I went Tyree Wilson. Uh, this one's a no-brainer. They need pass rush help. He's the best pass rusher left on the board. Yeah, and that that's that's a good pick. And it's weird. I've seen a lot of Tyree Wilson falling down the draft. Yeah, and when we did too our big, mock, he was strong. he was available later on. So it, in certain mocks we ran. So <laughs> interesting to see the the slide on Tyree. But you know, I, I know you're a, a closet Falcons fan, right? <laughs> Never. No, 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 no. Jamal's no. a New Orleans Saints diehard. So yeah. he's uh, he's from out there. So uh, the Falcons get Tyree Wilson. They get Tyree Wilson. Big big guy. Big <laughs> Big, strong guy. <laughs> so the Bears at number nine. Remember, they traded down from the number one pick. Yeah. And got some good guys in return. DJ Moore, receiver, some future draft picks. Peter Skaronsky, tackle from Northwestern. Justin Fields, if he's going to be your franchise quarterback, you've got to protect him somehow. Skaronsky's the best offensive lineman on the board. He's there at number nine for the Bears. No brainer for the Bears. They got to let Fields have a little bit of time to throw at. 10, we go on the Eagles on the clock. This one, another one, kind of difficult pick because they've kind of filled so many holes. The one thing that I went for here was Brian Branch. I get him coming off the board a little bit earlier than some people feel like. Eagles fans, I circle back. I get you again. We'll, we'll let you know on. But this, he's a, a an easy replacement for Chauncey Gardner Johnson and keeps that defense elite. Look, maybe a little high for Brian Branch, but you know, I think we're we're in a in some mocks we're hoping he falls to the Jaguars at 24. But in this one, he does not. He's a top 10 guy going to a Super Bowl team. So pretty cool there for Brian Branch at number 11 for me. 
Tennessee Titans, Jaguars are going to be paying attention to these picks, the AFC South rival, and they need some offensive line help. Yeah, they're teetering almost on a rebuild. New general manager, yeah. they've got some things to address, but I am giving them Paris Johnson Jr., maybe the number two offensive lineman in this class, big guy from Ohio State. He's there at number 11, building block for there, and I think they need some help at quarterback too. I don't think Ryan Tannehill is going to stand up forever, but I think Paris Johnson helps uh, keep him upright for another year. Makes sense. they got to fix that offensive line problem. At 12, I go back to the Texans on the clock again, had him take a quarterback first. I get him a wide receiver. Guy he knows pretty well, Jackson Smith and yep. Jigba, goes to Houston and gives C.J. Stroud that Ohio State connection in the NFL. Yeah, and you know, I'm not buying all the Stroud slip and falling down to the uh, to the tens. I mean, I, I think if you're the Texans, you've got. I mean, that's a perfect connection there. C.J. Stroud, early Jackson mm -hmm. in that second round. I like that. I like that Texans pairing for me with the Packers pick at number 13. Remember, they swapped up from 15 to 13 with the Aaron yeah, Rodgers trade. trade. Yep. This is a guy I really like. He was at the Players Championship earlier this was. year. Was Nolan Smith, the edge guy from Georgia. I think uh, you know I contemplated a, a receiving threat here for the Packers, but mm -hmm. they are allergic to taking pass catchers in the first round of the draft. Haven't done it since the dark ages of the 1850s, I think. So the Packers get Nolan Smith, the edge from Georgia. I'd hoped he would slip to the Jags too, but again, he's not in this draft. All right, let's pick up the pace and fly through a few of these in a row. Um, at 14, I had the Patriots taking Broderick Jones. 15, you have Darnell Wright going to the Jets. 16, Christian Gonzalez to the Commanders. And then 17, Joey Porter Jr. goes to the Steelers. 18 back on the board. I had Lucas Van Ness going to the Lions. Just think he's a Dan Campbell kind of guy. Great, great pick. Let's stop in at the Florida guy. 19, you've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going Hendon Hooker. Yeah, hey, it's, it's the rush on quarterbacks and... The Bucks, they don't have Tom Brady anymore. There's Kyle Trask there. You can't feel too confident about that. Hendon Hooker, yes, he's old. Yes, he's coming off an injury. But, again, in a draft where there's quarterbacks, maybe five good quarterbacks, they get the fifth one. Yeah, so the, the, it makes sense. I mean, an heir apparent to Tom yep. Brady, is it Kyle Trask? Probably not. So Hendon Hooker gives them a guy, even though he probably needs that red shirt year. Let's get to the Jags pick. So at 20, I had the Seahawks going Quentin Johnston. 21, you have Deontay Banks coming off the board to the Chargers. 22 is the Ravens, Miles Murphy. 23, Kalijah Cansey goes to the Vikings. So the Jaguars are on the clock at 24. I had this pick, and a lot of the guys that we really want right. to have in the conversation for the Jaguars, already off, off the board. Already off the board. I did not like the way this draft fell at all. So I was sitting there, and I'm looking, and I'm like, okay, what do I do here? And my thought process is I... I'd like to add some stuff on defense, and I, he, Justin Barney is a much bigger Michael Mayer fan than I am, but he was definitely in one of the final in the final conversation right. for this pick. I ended up going Florida guard Osiris Torrance. Um, I think he's going to be one of the guys that's heavily in the conversation for the pick, yep. and with the way things fell, I think he had to be the pick, uh, and it's just an investment in Trevor Lawrence. Keep yeah. him upright. Yeah, and, and and I don't mind the pick. I think yeah, you know, I look at this similar to almost like a Jawan Taylor back in when he was in the draft. You know, people projected Jawan Taylor even top 10. He fell to the Jaguars in the second round. They got the right tackle for four years, mm -hmm. a serviceable right tackle. I don't know if Osiris Torrance is going to fall to that pick in the second round. And, you know, so. again, when the Jawan Taylor pick happened, Jacksonville's picking the first pick of the second round kind of deal, you know, so they were picking early on. That's not the benefit this year of the draft. So if you need a guy you like, you know, we got Brian Branch off the board here. You've got a position of serious need in guard. You, you've touched on that in our News for Jags podcast. Yep. I do not think Osiris Torrance is a bad pick. A little high for a guard in my opinion, but again, you invest in Trevor Lawrence with this pick. You invest in the future with this pick, and Brandon Sheriff's not going to be around forever. you got a Ben Barch injury. Yep. So the pick makes sense. Not the sexiest pick of all, but again, a very solid pick. I, I think fans will... Grow to it'll, be, it, it'll grow on the the fans at number twenty four. Guard a guard pick's never gonna get much fanfare, but this guy could go on and have like a multiple Pro Bowl career right. and just quietly, and fans are like, oh yeah, he was really good. That was a good pick. Um, all right, let's fly through the rest of the draft, and then we'll talk a little bit more. 25, uh, Zay Flowers to the Giants. 26, Michael Mayer to the Cowboys. 27, Emmanuel Forbes to the Bills. 28, Dalton Kincaid to the Bengals. 29, Giant Michael Smith comes off the board to the Saints. 30, Bajan Robinson goes to the Philadelphia Eagles. And 31, to the Kansas City Chiefs, you got Will McDonald going as we wrap up the first round. All right, looking at how our draft fell, who's the biggest winner of day one of the draft? I think the Texans. I think you get a, a quarterback of the future. I think you get his favorite target, a college teammate target. Yeah. 
So I like the Texans, what they did. I like the Eagles, what they did, getting maybe one of the top prospects in the draft late in the first round. It'd be John Robinson. And I like what the Lions did. I mean, Lucas Van Ness, you pack and package him with Aiden Hutchinson from last mm -hmm. year on an already ascending team. And, oh, by, by the way, you get your quarterback of the future, too, pretty high. So I do like some of these uh, fringe moves. Detroit Lions, I think, knocked it out of the park. I think the Texans did, too, in their, in their rebuild. Those teams with two first-round picks, I mean, I think all of them had, uh, had nice combinations. Maybe I'm biased because I made both the Eagles picks, but I think getting Bajan Robinson and Brian Branch is a steal for both of them. I mean, I could literally flip those picks and say you went Robinson at 10 and Branch down there at 30, and nobody would blink yeah. an eye. All right, before we wrap things up, let's actually look ahead to a couple of the picks for the Jaguars down the road. Uh, we got their second and third round picks also yep. that we made. Second round, uh, Matthew Bergeron. We got them going a, a tackle from Syracuse. He played both tackle spots in college, guard. Yep. Um, so doubling up for offensive line in this thing for the Jaguars which is never a bad thing right? because uh, it's an investment in Trevor Lawrence. You got, you got to think that way. You got to think that way. And you know, as again, we see tackle depth. Jawan Taylor's not there anymore. You got Walker Little to slide right into his spot conceivably. Mm -hmm. Be nice to have a guy like Matthew Bergeron come in there who can play. You know, injuries are going to happen. Yep. Swing tackle, maybe play a little guard. So we're strengthening that offensive line. Last year, defense heavy early on. This year, offense heavy. An investment in the offense is an investment in Trevor Lawrence. Yep, and then the third round, back on the offense, they go tight end, Sam Laporta. Uh, that tight end room, very barren outside of Evan Ingram right now, so Sam Laporta makes sense. Coming out of Iowa, he's been in a pass-heavy offense. Uh, he was their pass threat, their main threat, so uh, he would bring and fit well in well with what the Jaguars are yeah, doing. Yeah, and you need a tight end. I don't buy what, what Doug and Trent said at the draft luncheon where they were you know comfortable with their tight end room and they did not see that as a necessity in the yeah. draft, but I'm calling BS on that. You've got to add some help to that tight end room. Evan Ingram, not signed. Garrett Prince, are you comfortable with him? No. Luke Farrell? No. You can't. You've got to add some weapons at tight end. Sam Laporte is the guy. Uh, don't forget, we've got plenty of coverage here on Channel 4. Our, our special on TV starts from 7 to 8 o'clock, and then we'll be online on News for Jax Plus from 8 to 9. See you.